As we told you at the top of the program, the 112th Congress was sworn in today, and with it, new leadership in the House. The number two man for the Republicans this session is Virginia's Eric Cantor, the new House Majority Leader. Mr. Leader, welcome. Brett, good to be here. Today, you had a phone call with President Obama. We have a picture of you two talking on the phone. I noticed in the transcript that your office sent out a number of times where you said, work together, can work together. Great bipartisanship, work with. Do you sense a different tone from this administration going forward now from day one? Brett, what I told the President was that we're all looking forward to his coming to Capitol Hill and delivering the State of the Union address. And what I'm hopeful that we're going to hear from him is uh, his uh, commitment to taking some significant steps towards cutting spending in this town. He's indicated he wants to work with us on cutting spending. In fact, he's even gone so far as to say he would like to help support the move to ban earmarks in appropriations bills. I told him I think he needs to talk to Leader Reed and to get the Senate to come along with that, uh, that viewpoint as well. The spending issue in the pledge to America, uh, Republicans said this, we will roll back government spending to pre-stimulus, pre-bailout levels, saving us at least $100 billion in the first year alone. Is that going to happen? It is going to happen, Brett, and it's a matter of looking at it in a calendar year. Uh, and what has happened is we were left because the Democratic majority of the past didn't pass a budget. So as you know, we're operating in a continuing resolution world, which means we're just continuing the expenditures at last year's levels. Uh, but if you look at from now uh, through a year, we're going to be able to accomplish those spending cuts. You said, uh, well, the pledge said, with common sense exceptions for seniors, veterans, and our troops. Yesterday, speaking to reporters, you said everything is on the table as far as spending cuts, including defense. Well, we, first of all, we are we are uh, going to take discretionary non-defense spending levels down to 08 levels. That's where you get the $100 billion uh, savings. But what we're also committed to is saying that everything's on the table, including expenditures at the Pentagon. The Republican majority majority is going to be a majority of national security. You know that. I mean, that's, we believe first and foremost, that's what the Constitution calls for. But it's not as if you have to and can defend every expenditure of every dollar and cent at the Pentagon. And that's where we're going to have to prioritize and insist that that department, as any other, has to do more with less. How serious are Republicans about this increased vote and possibly pushing up against it, using perhaps uh, it as leverage to increase spending cuts. Obviously, the debt ceiling increase vote is a very serious vote, has consequences either way you vote. Uh, what we have committed to is a Republican majority that each and every week will bring a spending cut bill to the floor. We've committed to bring down discretionary spending levels. We are committed to doing everything we can to begin to correct the deficit and to get this economy going again. And when we get to the point where we're going to take the debt limit increase vote. We're going to look at the kind of legislative alternatives that are available in order for us to approach that issue. So you think Republicans en masse could vote against raising the debt ceiling? Right. What I've said is this. We have got to demonstrate our commitment to cutting spending. Each and every week we're going to do that. Every day our actions are going to be focused on whether we are going to cut spending, shrink the size of this government, at the same time protecting and expanding liberty. And when we get to the debt limit increase vote, we will have established a record of where we are on spending and we're going to take a look at the kind of legislative alternatives and tools available in order to approach that vote. So when you hear Senator Reid call you extremist Republicans for pushing up against that and the administration talk about the disastrous uh, ramifications if it's voted down, how do you respond? You know, first of all, I, I think when you talk to, uh, if Leader Reid uh, begins to even approach, you know, views on the economy uh, and job creation. And I think the American people have already demonstrated what they think uh, about the de old Democratic majority view on that. I think that it's a new day here in Washington. It's not business as usual. Uh, and we're going to be very focused on responsible leadership that delivers results in a common sense conservative way. One week from tonight, you're scheduled to bring a vote on the repeal of 
Obamacare. Uh, as you know, many Democrats are speaking out about that. Uh, Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown called it a colossal waste of time. They're just playing politics. We need to focus on job creation. Robert Gibbs at the White House today said it's all symbolic, a bit of huff and puff. How do you respond to that about the repeal vote? <laughs> Again, listening to the Democrats talk about what Americans want for health care, uh, I think is something that uh, really uh, they have demonstrated they don't get what the American people want. We're going to bring this repeal vote up next week for a vote on the House floor. It is going to be a straight up or down vote. Either you're for Obamacare or you are not. We believe it is a job killing bill. It spends money we don't have and it will take away the kind of health care that Americans want. And that is part of the reason why the election went the way it did a couple of months ago. Americans don't want to see a bigger government, especially as far as their health care is concerned. And for the folks who say uh, Republicans are supposed to be about transparency in the 112th Congress and going through committees and following the rules and allowing amendments, uh, and yet that's not going to happen on this repeal vote. We've committed to a much more open Congress, and in fact, we passed the rules package just an hour or so ago in the House, demonstrating our commitment to an open process where the public can preserve and have their right to know. As far as the Obamacare bill is concerned, the Obamacare law has been litigated for the last two years, culminating in the election that occurred this November. The bill is a two-page bill. There's no ability to amend or not. Either you are for Obamacare or you're not. Last thing, historic day. You're now the highest serving Jewish leader ever in the House. Uh, do you think about that at all <laughs> in, in terms of your religion and representing folks? And you know, you know the, the great thing about our country is we all have the, uh, the, the right to pursue our faith and hold it dear. Uh, I am just humbled always by having the ability to serve the people that elect me in Virginia uh, and really enjoy the honor now of serving as majority leader and hope to be able to put my values, my faith, and who I am to work in a common sense conservative way to get results for the people. Mr. Leader, thank you very much for the time. Thank you, Brett.